There is an alternating current to the solar system. We briefly discussed it in our previous episode, but here we will describe it much more clearly so that you can hopefully visualize the solar system circuit in a way you have not yet considered possible. Despite how things might seem with the light and solar wind constantly streaming outward, there is not a direct flow of current only outward from the sun. In the same way that Earth's fields loop outward and back down to Earth, including the L-shells that span the Van Allen belts and the plasma tubes you likely heard about in the previous years, field-aligned plasma tubes. These fields are helping to return the Earth's ion wind back to the ionosphere, atmosphere, and geomagnetic system, in addition to their own outflow and inflow profiles. Now, while portrayed as lines, we are actually inside of a full shell, with the magnetic connections being as much Birkeland currents as tubes of magnetism. However, when it comes to the large-scale connections, the ones at the distance of space, it is normally confined to these structures, at least in how variably their plasma movements can be tracked, allowing us to know there are all these different vectors indeed existing. So let's now recall the individual magnetic connectivity of the planets to the sun, but let us do so from the macro scale perspective of a spiraling electromagnetic system circuit, rather than the direct outflow depicted here. And now we better understand the interplay of electric action between the planets and the sun by remembering how complex of a structure the heliosphere truly is. In towards the inner system, where the planets are found, it is a bit flatter and a more readily recognizable wavy electric field. It is through that sheet, the wave, that the planets do orbit, with our flat orbit managing to offer both hemispheres of the solar wind magnetism due to its own undulation. Now let us recall that while the solar wind does indeed go out in all directions, that's the red arrows, the magnetic fields and organized current is a full system cycling back to the sun, that's the blue, just in the same way Earth's fields capture and bend our ions back around into our system and circuits, this likely happens in the far reaches of the solar system as well, where the solar wind may actually have a route back to the sun. One wonders how much actually escapes for good. But back to this outflow versus inflow, when it comes to the overall interplanetary magnetic field, we do have to ask, where are the currents connecting at the Sun? It turns out the answer was likely handed to us in a recent solar Rosby wave story, and it goes beyond just the coronal hole IMF connections, where counter-rotating cells line the Sun, just like on Earth. And how does this work electrically on Earth? Well, let's look from the North Pole at the counter-rotating cells south of Alaska and see that the lows send up the current to the ionosphere, highs drop the current to the ground. It is these counter-rotating cells that allow us to track the global electric circuit. So back on the Sun, where we know the large-scale magnetism is much more dominant over the activity, and where we know there must be both outflow and inflow regions, why would the cells on the Sun not be behaving the exact same way? True enough, at this stage there is no way to know which is which. The flow might be opposite of what is shown here, but it is more than enough to understand where the fields are returning to the Sun on either side of the undulating current sheet. So, now that we know that every planet connects to an electric circuit back in the corona and photosphere of the Sun, it is easy to see how sunspot and solar flare activity could be affected by planetary conjunctions, and why confining one's analysis to gravity ignores not only the statistical correlations, but the primary driver of sunspot and solar flare activity, electromagnetism. When we recall that study of activity at the top of coronal loops being able to affect the flare activity below, it becomes abundantly clear that not only is the statistical correlation of planetary geometry's effect on solar activity a real relationship, but if it were not so, it might be a confounding puzzle given how electrically connected we are.